we know from our individual lives that there is nothing like a moral crisis to, re <coughs> to reconfigure moral values. There's nothing like a near-death experience to turn us around. And in certain respects, that does seem to be what's going on for the Earth community. There's a, there's, there's a shift happen, happening that is being accelerated by the encounter of death. Because death is, is the ultimate fear, and if you, we can face that, and if we can get a larger understanding of the cycles of death and birth, we will have um, a much greater um, spiritual ground with which to negotiate this next transformation. Now, what can astrologers do to improve the field's standing in the world, to basically allow it to give this great gift that, that we have? One thing, build bridges, each of you individually. Build bridges from what you know to what those are, uh, around you know. There's been a strong tendency for the astrological community to kind of ghettoize itself <laughs> and just speak with each other and speak a language that can be only understood by each other. And then and people coming into a, an uh, astrological conference who are not astrologers think that, where did I, what are they talking about? And the, you know, the, the arcane jargon and the, um, the unintelligibility and the obscurity. It's okay to be specialists and to be able to we can speak with, like that with each other and, and fly <laughs> playfully and, and euphorically with, the, with that knowledge. But we need to also build bridges to the larger, very intelligent culture that surrounds us and that would like would very much relish having this information if we could make ourselves intelligible to them. And that takes work. We need to find ways of doing that. Um, we, for example, I've taught for years uh, to individuals to transit analysis. I think transit analysis is one of the most powerful tools that a person can have to basically awaken their lives to a, uh, a more participatory awareness of these archetypal principles that are working in our lives. And it liberates us to live a more conscious life, to honor the gods that, and goddesses that are, are present in them, and to be more participatory with them. It also is very healing. When you know your transits, we were talking about this today in the, in the uh, workshop, it's, it's so nourishing on one hand to have a sense for why is this happening to me in my life, the timing of it. It also gives a cosmic context to it. It's not just me. It's somehow related to larger cosmic cycles of purposes and meanings that transcend me and that are coming through my life. And that, that has a, a, a deeply healing effect. It's also deeply healing in the sense of just discovering that the universe is meaningful and that it is purposeful, and that it is in some mysterious sense focused on the earth, on this moving earth, and that it's even focused on individuals, and on you individually, and on me individually. Amazing act of cosmic care, cosmic love in a sense, is being constantly poured through this precise orchestration of the planetary alignments with our own eyes. And so for a person to have a direct encounter with that, is so liberating spiritually and so psychologically healing that it's a gift that I've, I've always wanted um, as many people as possible to have. And so whenever I've given um, readings, I've always, I never say this or that, like it's going to happen, for example, which we should, you know, obviously we want to be constantly, I gave the whole lot more today, so I don't want to talk about it more, but just the idea of honoring the creative unpredictability of the universe and how the astrological knowledge we have of like a, a given planetary alignment or uh, transit, progression, natal aspect, doesn't tell us in a concrete, literalistic, predictive way what's going to happen. It is archetypally predictive. It's not concretely predictive. And so when we talk to our clients or our friends or ourselves, it's so important to honor that larger multivalent range of ways in which any given um, astrological factor could come through. And that is empowering rather than discouraging and limiting when, when we give that fuller picture. 
But my main point here is that, uh, like in the case of the transits, I I would teach it in my, in my courses, and always I could do it to individuals and many individuals, but I always was hoping to somehow find a way of reaching many, many more individuals at once so that they all could be basically doing the simple thing of knowing what their transits are on any given day, the big outer planet transits, and also the, the shorter acting um, inner planet transits, and be able to, with just a, a, a good handbook, uh, transit handbook like Rob Hands or Sequoia and Ackers or Evertines or um, the, the, the uh, larger number that are emerging now, just with a, that handbook and, and the knowledge of what the transits are, to just meditate on that each day, just for a few minutes. It would be such a liberation. If 